Funding for this channel is provided by viewers like you. Thank you. Previously on <clears throat> this. He delivered my book somewhere else. Morale is low. What's up, punks? As you can see, the books have arrived. And we will talk about that in just a second. But first, I would like to talk about the There's No Rush snail t-shirts, which are available now. Thank you so much to everyone who bought from our first campaign, the Cowboy Cats Crew Neck. Thanks to you, we were able to donate almost 80 euros to Cats for Adoption Kiev, which is a feline rescue foundation in Ukraine. Today, I present to you the snail t-shirt. I designed this myself. I sell them through Everpress.com, which uses a pre-order method, so there's no waste, which is so important to me. What this means is that they are print on demand, so you put your pre-order in. Once pre-orders are closed in a month, they'll start making them and shipping them out to you, which means they'll probably be shipped out around mid-September. What that means is that these are limited editions, so you can get them for the next month. This campaign is offered in two different colors. There is both white and a milky tea brown. I received some of your emails and comments that there were not enough size options in the last campaign. So I've talked to Everpress and according to them, the white t-shirts can go up to a 5XL. Thank goodness. Now, why snail? Why the slogan? Let's talk about it. As some of you may have noticed over the past couple of years, I'm obsessed with snails. I love them so much. They make me so happy. And I also also recently received my autism diagnosis, which is such a huge new chapter of understanding for my life. And for so long, I struggled with understanding why I am not on the same page as my peers. And since I was privileged enough to get this diagnosis, I'm able to put all of these questions into a much better context. So something I am consistently reminding myself throughout my life is that there's no rush. Maybe that's why I like snails so much. Not only do they look like little puppies, but they are the physical embodiment of taking life slow and doing whatever you need to do on your own pace. Apparently it's all too common for women to not receive their autism diagnosis until much later in life. I'm almost 30 years old. I could have dodged a lot of worries, stress, and problems if I had gotten my diagnosis earlier, but a lot of us go under the radar, which is why I decided to donate 10% of the proceeds for this shirt to the Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network. Their mission is to provide community support and resources for autistic women, girls, trans feminine, trans masculine, non-binary, and gender queer people, and all others of marginalized gender. So if you like one of your own, you can click the link in the description box below. Help us donate to the charity. Wear your own snails with pride. Have some fun with us. So that's it. Thank you for listening. Let's talk about books because they finally came. But let's sit on the couch and be nice and cozy. These are the books that I ordered for last week's video because they're on the shorter side and they were books that I assumed I could fly through pretty fast. However, sometimes things just simply do not go according to plan. So we got them. We got them at last. Let's talk about them. The first book in the stack is Hide by Kirsten White. The back says 14 competitors, seven days, everywhere to hide but no to run. This is a newer release and the reviews seem so torn, but the concept seems so fun to me. And like I've said a thousand times before, I don't think I have the best taste when it comes to thrillers and everything, so I think I'll like it. I think I'll like it. The next book in the stack is Paradise by Fernanda Melchor. I've been seeing this book a lot, but what really sold me on it was Jack Edwards recently read it and said that it was very, very sad. The back says, inside a luxury housing complex, two misfit teenagers sneak around and get drunk. This is a very short and I've heard very painful character study. So if you read it, let me know. The next book in the stack is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I cannot believe I haven't read this book yet. I cannot believe it. This was put on my radar years ago by an old YouTube friend, Dana. And also my friend Abel recently told me that this was a really good book. So I finally have it. This is about a magical cafe where you can visit the past and visit somebody that you went to the cafe with in the past. But the only catch is that you have to return before your coffee gets cold. That's the name. I don't know. I just have a really good feeling about this book. I think the concept is so creative. I'm really, 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 really excited. The next book is is Sweet Bean Paste by Dorian Tsukigawa. This is a book that I don't know too, too much about, but it's been recommended to me so many times. And also my booktube friend Kirsty recently got it. And it seems like a quiet character study that follows a few people. This is the kind of book that I can see myself picking up when I want to slow down, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's really intense. It's been on my radar forever and I'm really excited to read it. The next book is Legends and Lattes by Travis Beldry. So this is a Dungeons and Dragons style cozy fantasy and it's gay and it's about two ogres, question mark, running a cafe. The backs as a hot cup of fantasy slice of life with a dollop of romantic frog. What? But what really sold me on this one is that last week I read A Song for the Wild Bill, which is also a cozy fantasy. I saw it on a cozy fantasy list and this was also on the list. Maybe cozy fantasy is my thing. Two more books. Second to last one being Hani and Ishu's Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Shakirdar. In my sapphic recommendations video, I mentioned The Henna Wars. I loved The Henna Wars so much and I asked if any of you had read the other book by this author and looking back, I was just looking for an excuse to get it, I think. And so when a couple of you said that it was 
was very good. I jumped on the opportunity. <laughs> Beck says, easy going and popular Hani Khan has it all until she comes out as bisexual and her friends don't believe her. An academic overachiever, Ishu Day, has a lot to prove, but her shot at head girl relies on being popular. Their solution, pretend to be dating even though they hardly know each other and definitely don't like each other. I love how this author writes and I know I'm gonna like it. And finally, the book that I'm the most excited for is Miss Ice Sandwich by Miko Kawakami. I still haven't read anything by Miko Kawakami. I know, I know. But my fellow book two friend Kirsty recommended this book to me. She said that it'll most likely be my new favorite. Apparently the character is very autistic coded. It's super short. It's under 100 pages. Apparently it's about a little boy who falls in love with a woman who sells sandwiches. Really simple concept. It seems so cute. So these were the books that were supposed to be here last week. But like I said, sometimes things don't go according to plan. Sometimes the people delivering the mail make mistakes. A wise philosopher once said, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. Everybody knows what, what I'm talking about. Everybody gets that way. Last week we read so many great books, so I'm not even mad. And now we have a bunch of great new books. And so I'm still not mad. In today's video, we're gonna be taking it slow. Because I went from having the plague to reading for 24 hours and three days to editing a 40 minute video. And you know what? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm still not 100%. I'm sure you're tired too. Everyone I know is tired. We're all tired. The world is exhausting. So this week my goal is to just You know, I want to get some reading done, but not put too much pressure on myself. I have a tattoo appointment tomorrow that I had to reschedule from having the plague. I'm getting a frog on my leg. I'm so excited. We have to get a new couch because this is Lawrence's bachelor pad couch still. This couch is very old and we need one that has a bed built into it. And that's that. I'd like to take care of my plants a little bit. I want to play some Sims. I just want to relax and take it easy because I feel like I've been hit by a truck. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, great. As of right now, I am reading The Island of Missing Trees. I started reading this in last week's video and it felt like a crime putting it down but my brain simply couldn't handle it. I'm reading it really slowly which fits the theme of the video. Hoping to finish this this week and then I think also I would really like to read Miss Ice Sandwich and also hide because I need to know where I stand. I need to know. These are my top priority. The TBR changes every five minutes let's be honest. So we'll see. But right now my head hurts too much to read words. So I think I'm gonna play some Sims. When I had COVID all I did was play the Sims. I didn't use any money cheat and my house looks like this. It's ginormous. I'm on my third generation so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna live someone else's life because I don't feel like living my own right now. <laughs> Let's pick up Miss Ice Sandwich because I don't have the brain power to create this magical space in my brain, unfortunately. So I may or may not have fallen asleep while reading, not because it was boring, I was just really tired. And Albus came up and snuggled with me and then my camera died. And then I finished Miss Ice Sandwich. We're gonna talk about it. But I just ended the day watching Lawrence play Stray and working on some Patreon stuff. So I think we get an A plus for the day. It was a very perfectly slow day as intended. And now it's the next day. It's tattoo day! Ah! I'm so happy that I rested up yesterday because I'm feeling so much better today, which I need because we have quite the adventure ahead of us. But first, let's talk books. I have to get Miss Ice Sandwich from my favorite show. Would you just look at that? This book is under 100 pages and basically every page has a dog ear on it. This is a very short story about a little boy who's definitely neurodivergent coded, maybe not intentionally, but it's there. And he becomes absolutely enamored with the woman who sells sandwiches at his local supermarket. It really wrapped up nicely and at the end I was like, you know what? I don't need any more. This did what it came here to do and it was so sweet. There were so many quotes that got me, especially. But there's loads of hard stuff in life and maybe when we're grown-ups there's going to be tons more hard stuff to deal with and when that happens I'm going to tell myself I can't give in or freeze up and get discouraged and do nothing. I have to believe that. Oh, there's not too much to say because it's so short and I don't want to spoil it but just know I felt seen and understood with this book. I loved it so much. It was so short, sweet to the point. It was so well written. So let's go put her back on the favorite shelf. I'm gonna read a little bit of The Island of Missing Trees before the festivities begin. I'm only on page 20, but not for long. <laughs> a rich, magical new book on belonging and identity, love and trauma, nature and renewal. Two teenagers, one Greek, one Turkish, meet in a tavern on the island they both call home.
du 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 Anyway. Oh, you're so cute. Here's the thing. Okay, Ruby. <laughs> I read like 20 more pages of this book. Is it beautifully written? Yes. Is there any reason I should care yet? No. Like, you gotta hook me in. This book is apparently about two friends that aren't supposed to be friends. I haven't met any friends yet. There's a girl in school and a tree. Hello? Ugh. I think I was just spoiled with my 24-hour readathon because I read a bunch of really fast-paced quick snappy books and now it's like I have to use my brain? Ugh. Let's go get tatted. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. Do you understand that? Turn, turn the, the freaking frogs frog. gay. Bow, bow, serious crap. Gay. Frogs freaking frogs. Bow. It's not funny. I'm gonna say it real slow for you. Gay. Frogs. I got it. It's done. It looks so good. I'm keeping the plastic on for as long as I can, but sneaky peeky. Ah! Oh my god, I'm so dead from today. That was a bus and two trains and a lot of sounds and a lot of sensations and I'm just a little bit burnt out. I didn't do any reading on the train, nor did I do any work on the train. I just watched my favorite ASM artist, side channel videos, sassy mushroom vlogs, sassy mushroom vlogs, say that three times fast. She's just so comforting to me and I guess I was just really overwhelmed and I couldn't use my brain. I just wanted to be comforted and so that's what I did my whole commute there and my whole commute back and I have no regrets because this is a slow vlog <laughs> and I'm doing Doing what I said I would do. I'm still not that well after catching the plague. I already kind of suffered from chronic pain and chronic fatigue and let me tell you, not great after the plague. No ma'am. But you know what is great? I ordered some books secondhand about a month ago and I thought that they were lost in the ether and they came today. Some of them did. The first is Ruth Ozeki's The Book of Four of Emptiness. I recently got Ruth Ozeki's other book, A Tell for the Time Being, and I haven't read it yet because I really just recently got it. But multiple people from the Summer Slash Readathon said that that book or this book by Ruth Ozeki was their favorite. So I trusted everyone's opinions and I just got both before trying them. Probably wasn't the wisest choice, but I did it. Do I even know what this one's about? Yes. Yes, that's right. After the tragic death of his father, 13-year-old Benny O begins to hear voices. That was enough. That sold me. Book from a child's perspective, book about trauma. Those are all my favorite books. So, speaking of, <laughs> Memoirs of an Imaginary Friend by Matthew Dix slash Green. Apparently his name is actually Matthew Dix, but he had to change it on all of his books. And I really wanted to get a Dick copy, um, but alas. This was like three bucks. And I'm so excited. I've had this one on my online TBR for so long. Hello, Rumi. This is about a boy who has an imaginary friend, and the book is from the Imaginary Friends perspective and then the boy gets kidnapped I think and so the imaginary friend has to help him get to safety from my understanding Rumi <laughs> I'm really excited for both of these books I'm gonna be honest I believe all of you Rumi <laughs> when you say that the island of missing trees is a wonderful book I can see it I can but it's a lot of work for my brain beautiful work but it's work nonetheless and I don't want to put it down again but I might put it down again we'll give it one more try and see if I fall into it and if not I'm gonna pick something else up and I apologize but that's where we're at I'm gonna eat some dinner and I'm gonna sleep a lot and then I can show you the tattoo better tomorrow and we'll read some more and you look grumpy are you hungry yes bye Good morning! First of all, without further ado, this is my tattoo. This is my bullfrog. I think it ties into the rest of the leg perfectly. I love the placement. I love Dana's art style. Of course, I will link my artist down below. Most of my tattoos have been done by her. Woo! This morning I woke up very early, cleaned the house, cleaned myself, and I'm gonna give the Island of Missing Trees one more shot. Today, I have to go get coffee beans. We're all out of beans. Gotta go to the grocery store, and we're going to Ikea because we have to get a bed pullout couch for a special friend that's visiting next week. Let's do this day. <laughs> the jungle's car gloom. Take my melatonin gummies, even though I'm already so sleepy. And as if that isn't enough, I also have some bedtime tea. She's gonna be caught out. Ta. Anyway.
January. Today was a day we cleaned the house. We went grocery shopping. We went to a local coffee shop and got some beans. At said coffee shop, we met up with a friend. She socialized. for two whole hours. And then Lawrence and I went to Ikea and we got our bed couch so then we can have visitors, which is a huge step, very exciting. And it just got delivered. Wanna do a reading check-in? <gasps> You? First things first, also as you saw, may or may not have stopped into a graphic novel shop. Little Miss supports local businesses. You're welcome, economy. You see, <laughs> sometimes you go into graphic novel shops and it's just Marvel, and they are not here for the girls, gays, and the they's. And then other times you go in and they have Tilly Walden, and you just want to give them your money so they keep being there for us. You understand. I don't even know what this one is about. Oh my god, book one, there's more than one. I just want to read everything that Tilly Walden has ever created, and so I will blindly purchase anything the end. This is from the Walking Dead world. She wrote characters that live in the Walking Dead world. Fascinating. I had no idea that's what this was about, Rumi. You bought a book and you have no idea what it was about? It's Tilly Walden. That's all I need to know. So that's the first thing I got. And then I was swayed by one more thing. I mean, come on. The complete Paper Girl story! I'm remaining calm. I read the first one or two Paper Girls a couple of Halloweens ago and loved it. I know that I might be alone in this, but I love having the entire collection of things in one book. I'm not an issues gal. Controversial, I understand. It's good, it's really good. So good that I needed the whole thing. This just had to happen today. The title of this video is New Tattoo and New Books. We don't need to falsely advertise to our friends on the internet.com, now do we? No. And then this is a graphic novel that I pre-ordered a month or more ago. After the Rain is a graphic novel adaptation of Nettie Okorafor's on the road. It's a story of a young Nigerian American woman who has a dark secret and her interactions with ancient ancestral spirits during an uncanny rainstorm. The art style? Incredible. Are you kidding me? It seems a little spooky. It seems quite spooky. Spoilers. I'm so excited. Part horror, part magical realism. Wow. So I took it as a sign from the gods that I came home from the graphic novel shop and a graphic novel that I pre-ordered and had been waiting on came through. Also I'm taking it as a sign from the gods because last week books that I ordered for my readathon did not arrive. And now suddenly all of these books that I ordered months and months ago are coming within the past few days. Just to scratch that itch for us. Just to make this video all the more satisfying. And I appreciate it. But anyway, it is the end of the day. It is almost bedtime. I'm just gonna read until I fall asleep. We're basically on page 100 out of 300. 140 or something. So we're like a third of the way done. I'm not good at math. Something like that. And tomorrow we're gonna do some serious reading because we have no other plans. And that's what I wanna do. Let's do that. Good night. Good morning. We put the blanket on the TV and we put pillows up there. It's part of the roomy proofing process. The chaos that he creates every evening, unparalleled. Anyway, we are about halfway done with the Island of Missing Trees. I'm liking it. We're bouncing around a lot. We're going from the 70s in Cyprus to the 2010s in London to a trees perspective, but I kind of don't care because I like the writing style. Got about 200 pages left, a little bit more. I'm gonna finish this this morning. It's really early. I'm sleepy. I've said that every single day. Post plague fatigue, too real. But we're totally gonna read Hyde today as well. It's pretty short. It's like 230 pages. So that's the plan today. And then when Lawrence gets home from work, we're gonna build the new couch. Ah! I've decided that all day today is gonna be a grout fit day. Sometimes it has to happen. I finished The Island of Missing Trees and now we're talking about it. <laughs> I thought this one was pretty good. I quite liked it. I thought that the actual story could have used some work. The pacing felt a little bit off to me. We didn't get into the meat and the potatoes of the story until pretty far into it. It had me under the impression that this book would be a lot more magical than it is. I would say it's a lot more historical fiction than it is magical realism, which is fine. It was definitely very educational. And the imagery in this was immaculate. I loved the food description. I loved all of the scenes that were centered around nature. It was so gorgeously written. I just wish I cared more about the actual story. But honestly, I think that's my only complaint. I really, really enjoyed this one and I definitely understand why it has as much buzz that it has because it is just so gorgeous. We love when the cover matches the inside. Now I wanna read Hyde. This is a thriller that a lot of people that I have a lot of book compatibility with hated. They hated this one. It's nice to just sit in the breeze in a grout fit and read. It's all you can ask for. In my opinion, let's read Hyde by Kirsten White. The Challenge. Spend a week hiding in an abandoned amusement park and don't get caught. The prize, enough money to change everything.
We were very clunkily introduced to over 14 characters, so we took notes, which is always a red flag. If I have to take notes to keep track of your characters. No! Hi, this book is so bad. I gave it one star. Um, and the reason why, it's like to compare the flatness of this book to cardboard is an insult to cardboard. I have never read something as underdeveloped as this. Good morning from the new couch. It looks exactly the same, but it has a bed inside of it. I got another piece of book mail yesterday. I don't know what you're thinking. Allie, you buy so many books, which is legally not incorrect. But all these books that are coming in, I ordered from this place called Awesome Books. They cycle through a lot of books pretty fast. A lot of them are used. And I ordered like five or six of them over a month ago and none of them arrived. And suddenly this week, all of them are coming individually. <laughs> so I think it seems like a lot more than it actually is, but also it is a lot. So finally, you're the only one I've told the stories behind abortion has come. I want to get closer. This is not intimate enough. I really intended on reading this during July, but it only just got here, so I have to start it now. But this is the last piece of book mail <laughs> that should be coming for a hot minute. Uh, this is a nonfiction that a doctor who works at Planned Parenthood, I believe she collected a bunch of stories from a bunch of people who have had abortions. Got a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different experiences, really fulfilling the new book section in the title, for sure. But I thought we could do a final reading check-in for the week because we finished Hyde yesterday and yikes, it was quite bad. I typically tend to like the thrillers that a lot of people are not impressed with because I just had a fun time. But this one, there was just so much lost potential. I agree with everyone's complaint. I think that it's super underdeveloped. I feel like it bit off way too much, way more than it could chew. We have 14 different characters and we're just jumping between all of their thoughts. There's barely any theme park descriptions and I thought we were in such a cool place. There was so much potential with that. I thought the twist was really cheap. I just was so not impressed with this one. And I don't know, it takes a lot for me to not like a thriller. As long as I have a good time, I'm usually fine, but I did not really have a good time with this one. It was really boring and it was just so upsetting because the concept is so cool and it just does not deliver. So disappointing. I also agree with everyone in saying that this felt very YA. It's marketed as adult horror. So you expect a lot of vivid descriptions, a lot of scary things. This was never scary. This was never even thrilling. We're always fading to black and never seeing what's happening. It was not good. I did not like it. I wouldn't recommend this one. I would not say you should pick this one up. We had a pretty good reading week nonetheless. So that's fine. The Island of Missing Trees. The story could have been tighter, but the imagery was amazing. I thought it was beautifully written. And then of course, Miss Ice Sandwich became a new favorite favorite. So overall, it was a pretty good reading week. Thank you so much for tuning in to this slower, more relaxed reading vlog. I hope your week was good. And if not, I hope next week is better. Thank you so much to everyone on the Patreon who sponsored this channel each and every day. Wait, wait, the designs for August are so cute. I was inspired by Midwest wildflowers because I'm really missing home. Ah! The calendar is what I'm most excited for. Like all comes together so nicely. Ah! So you can get matching wallpapers and calendars on the Patreon. You can join the book club. You can get a matching bookmark each and every month. It all depends on what tier you choose, but it is because of the Patreon that I'm able to upload as often as I do. So I really appreciate everybody that's on it. Thank you so much for making it possible to engage in my special interest. Reading and drawing being how I pay my bills. Endlessly grateful. If you would like your own There's No Rush snail t-shirt, that will also be linked down below. This is the other color option. I'm so excited about them. They're so cute. And I think that's it. As always, thank you for clicking. Thank you for caring. And thank you for being nice. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.